a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Just I want us to turn to our Bibles in the book of John, chapter number five. We are going to be reading from verse number 1 to 9 of John chapter 5. I'm reading from King James Version. You can follow up uh, with any other version that you have. But I want to get it from um, the King James Version. The Bible says in John chapter number 5, reading from verse 1, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem the ship market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down, at a certain season and into the pool and troubled the water, whosoever then, first after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Father, we are so grateful for your word. The Bible says that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. I pray that as we share from this word today, you will give us life, give us understanding. Open our eyes, inner eyes. Give us a revelation of your word. Take this word farther than I can ever take it, Lord Jesus. And minister to your people in a very special way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to speak to us from this very familiar portion of scripture. A word that I believe is important for many of us that are seated here this morning. I have chosen to entitle this message, Don't be comfortable in your mess. Don't be comfortable in your mess. In this life that we find ourselves in, we are going to find ourselves in messes once in a while. But don't be comfortable in a mess that you find yourself in. The Bible tells us that Jesus was going to a feast in Jerusalem. And as he was going to this feast, he had to pass by a place called Bethesda. In this place, there was a pool. This pool had five porches. I don't know how to describe the porches. Some other versions call it porticos. Um, <laughs> there are several names that are given to this, but it could be several ponds that make the whole place. And the Bible says that in this place, in this pool, at a certain season, 
An angel will come and stir or trouble the water. And around this pool were several people, sick people. And the Bible describes several categories of people that were there that were sick. Um, if you get back to the scripture, the Bible describes several people that you will find several sick people that you will find in this place. All of them were waiting for a season, a time when an angel of the Lord will come and stir up the water. Whoever enters first was healed of whatever sickness. It didn't matter whether it was fibroid or chest pains or high blood pressure or HIV. Um, whatever it is, if you step in fast, you are healed. And so there were several categories of people that were in this particular place. The first to be mentioned, the Bible says, were important people. This category were also found in this pool or by this pool in Jerusalem. Now, important is the opposite of potent. Potent means power, strength. Important means no power, no strength. It's the opposite of potent. So in other words, there were people in this place or around this pool that had no power, no strength to do anything to change their situation. There is nothing as bad as having no power, no strength to do anything to change the situation that you find yourself in. So these people were there. They had no strength, no power to change their situation. And maybe in this service this morning, there could be people that are impotent. You find yourself in a situation and you have no power, no strength to change it. You wish it could be changed. You desire for it to change. You want it to change. But all the efforts you put into it, you just can't change the situation. You are impotent. It could be an attitude. It could be a habit. It could be something, a mess that you find yourself in. You just want to change the thing, but you don't have the power and the strength to change it. The second category of people that we find in this porch, or I mean in this pool, or by this pool, were the blind. There were blind people in this place. And the, the Greek word that is used for blind, as written here, is paplo, which means cloudy, shaky, and clear. Physically and even mentally. So there were people here that could not see. And maybe there are people in this service this morning that are also blind. You can see. There's a way out for you that Jesus will say, this is the way, walk in it, my son. But you just can't see the way. There are those that are open in front of you. You need to walk into these doors, but you can't see the doors. You're blind. There is a way out of your problem, a way out of your situation, but you can't see it. You're blind. They were found around the pool. And they are found in many churches today. Waiting for the Holy Spirit of God to start up something for them to get their deliverance. 
They were there around the pool. Do you know that Jesus says that our eyes need to be opened? I think it's Paul who wrote in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 that our, our spiritual eyes or the eyes of our spirit to be opened up. The Bible also talks of God setting doors before us. But sometimes we don't see it. The Bible also says that I've set before you life and death. Choose life. Blessings and curses. Choose blessing. But many times we want to choose the blessing. We want to choose the life. But we don't see the life and we don't see the blessing. We are blind. They were found around this pool. And maybe they are found here this morning. In this same pool, around this same pool, were also found the people that the King James describes as halt. Now, halt simply means, other versions describe them as crippled. These are people that cannot move. At the speed or at the level they would desire to move. Limping people. Are people that are stopped. Because halt means stop. And they may be seated here this morning. Are people that have been halted. People that are limping. Instead of running, you are limping. Instead of walking and moving to your destiny, you are halted. You are stopped by particular issues in your life. You are actually grounded. You desire to move, but you are not moving. You desire to go on, but you are not going on. You are halted, crippled in a way. You can't do what you desire to do. The fourth category of people that we found in this place are what the Bible called withered people. Withered means you are not flourishing, you are not fruitful, you are withered, you are not green. While the Bible says that I want to give you favor to make you fruitful and increase, but you are just withered. You are not fruitful in any venture that you start to do. You put your hands into things, they wither. There were people in this place that were withered. They could not flourish. Do you remember the Bible says that a righteous man is planted by the rivers. His leaves are green all through the season, and that is what the Bible desires for us to be. But there are times that we find ourselves withered. And in this area of the pool, we are withered people. People that were not being fruitful, they were not flourishing. And maybe you're here today and you are withered. You put too much effort, but things are withered, dry. They're not flourishing. They're not fruitful around you. Lastly, the Bible says these people were waiting. They were waiting. And this can also describe another category of people, the waiting class. You are waiting for things. Single and waiting. And you know, waiting is not a bad thing, but waiting can be bad. Especially when situations and circumstances in your life lengthen your waiting period. Sin can lengthen your waiting period. Remember the children of Israel. 
The Lord said they were going to be in captivity for 70 years. So what they needed to do was wait for 70 years and then they'll come back to their land. But you know what? They stayed in captivity for 77 years instead of 70. Their weight was lengthened. Because of being stiff-necked. And when the children of Israel were finally being released from Egypt to go to the promised land... They are delivered with the mighty hand of God, celebrating. There was a waiting period in between the promise and the promised land. The journey was supposed to take, some say, 10 days, others say 40 days. But it took 40 years. Their wait was lengthened because of sin and disobedience and stubbornness of the people. And there could be people here who are supposed to have broken through two years ago, but you are still waiting. Supposed to have prospered two years ago, but you are still waiting. Supposed to have made it in life three years ago, but you are still waiting. Your waiting has been lengthened. Because of certain things. But I've come to tell you this morning. A time comes when your waiting comes to an end. A time comes when the blindness that you are going through is dealt with. A time comes when um, your crippleness can be healed. And this morning I am here to tell you. If you are around the pool, you are impotent, you are blind, you are out or crippled, you are withered or you are waiting and you are comfortable in that situation, you are the one I've come to talk to this morning. I want you to get out of that situation. Don't get comfortable because being blind is a mess, being crippled is a mess, being withered is a mess, being impotent is a mess that we need to get out of in the name of Jesus. Now when we get back to the portion of scripture, the Bible says that Jesus appeared into the scene and when Jesus comes into the scene, the Bible says that he sees a man that has been before or besides or around this pool for 38 years with a condition, with a mess in his life, 38 years. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw him lie, and today I want you to see this line, this verse, that first line, I want you to see it in a different way. Because when Jesus sees this man, he asks him a question that to many of us may be rude, may be an uncaring question, may be a question of, um, you know, uh, mocking the person. Would you be made whole? Of course. I've been in this situation for 38 years. Of course. I need to be made whole. So Jesus asked, would you be made whole? And you may wonder, why ask him such a question? Why ask something that is so obvious? And there are many of you that I need to ask this morning. I may know your case, I may not know your case, but you know it. Would you want to be made whole? Would you want that situation, that issue, that problem, that challenge changed in your life? Because the issue here was, the man was lying there in his bed for 38 years. What Jesus saw was a man that was no longer interested in the healing. A man that was no longer interested in striving, struggling, pushing himself to get the healing. He's been here. He's been frustrated. He's tried all he can. And therefore he says, I 
can't do it. So I'm just sitting here. The man was just lying there, not making any effort, not desiring change anymore. And there are people seated here today, maybe listening to me, and you have been in a situation, circumstance, problem, a challenge, and you're just sitting there doing nothing, making no effort. Why? Because you feel like there's nothing else I can do. You are actually getting comfortable in your mess. But I've come to tell you today, don't get comfortable in the mess that you find yourself in. The man had a bed in a place where people are, are sick and people are mourning and crying and writhing of pain. The man was lying there in a bed, you know. He was, he was just there seated for 38 years. And today I want to disagree with certain statements that I myself have stated. And I know that we quote them all the time. You know, we, you have heard of this statement that say, when life gives you a lemon, make a lemonade. I believe sometimes this is where the problem comes from because, you know, we, we have been given lemon. We, we expected apples and, and oranges and mangoes. Now we have a lemon. It's not the lemon we wanted, but because life has given us a lemon, we are not going to strive to get the mango and the apple that we wanted. We settle for the lemon and we say, we'll make a lemonade out of it. I have come to tell you, when you are going for the apple and life gives you a lemon, don't make a lemonade. Continue pursuing the apple until you get it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when we get into the situation of oh life has given me a lemon, let me make a lemonade. You know what we're going to do? You find yourself in a mess and you make a mesonade. We don't need mesonade. We need deliverance out of the mess. Praise the name of the Lord. There are so many people that have decided and made a choice because I can't get what I wanted, because I can't be delivered from this, because I can't make it out of this, because I've tried so hard, and here is a mess that I find myself in. I am just going to make a mess on it out of this. I'm going to just enjoy this mess. Get out of it, because you are not meant to be in a mess. Jesus died for you on the cross and said, it is finished. The man was comfortable in the mess that he found himself in. Jesus asked him, would you want to be made whole? And he says, there is no man. There's not a man to put me in there. You know, sometimes we build what we call systems of survival in bad situations that we find ourselves in. The system of survival says, if I can change it, I will change it. If I can't change it, I will make it bearable and acceptable. And this is what many of us have done with the message that we find ourselves in. I'm living a life I'm not supposed to live. I'm dealing in things I'm not supposed to deal in. I am connected to things I'm not connect, I'm supposed to be connected to. I am uttering things I'm not supposed to utter. I am doing things I'm not supposed to do. And you know what? I want out. I want to get out so badly. I'm in a situation where I feel trapped in. I want out so badly. But because I can't change it, because I can't get out of it, I'm just going to make it bearable and acceptable. I have come to tell you this morning, Jesus did not save you to make things bearable and acceptable. He saved you to get up, arise, and shine for him. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why he says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. That is why he says, I have come to give you life and life in abundance, not bearing life, not just accepting certain things that life Life grieves to us. This is not time to make lemon, lemonade out of lemons. It's time to pursue what God has called us to pursue. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Life is not all about survival. Life is about living a purpose. Fulfilling a purpose in this life. Praise the name of the Lord. It's not about us surviving. So when you are just in a situation and you're surviving, you know, there are people in marriages, 
abusive marriages. You are in abusive marriage. It's a mess of a marriage. But instead of doing anything or something about it, you cover up everything. You come, you smile. You make us feel like all is okay. And you are in a mess. You are getting comfortable in a mess. Why the mess is supposed to be sorted, treated, dealt with, corrected. You are sitting there in a mess. You are trying to make it look like it's okay. Uh, uh, you are bearing the mess. You are accepting the mess. Instead of dealing with the mess and correcting the mess, you are, you are covering it up. You are, you are living an acceptable life. There are people in, in relationships where they are being abused, you know, by a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they are there accepting the abuse. You are accepting being manipulated and taken advantage of and you're just there in that mess of a situation that you found yourself in. You are being forced to do things you don't want to do because you are in a mess of a relationship that you cannot get yourself out. I have come to tell you this morning, get out, rise up and get out. Don't get comfortable in a mess. Praise the name of the Lord. You get so comfortable to a point even where you are asked the question, do you want out? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to stop this? You're just there. I, I, I. You have so many things to say, but I want out. So people take advantage of you because you feel like there's nothing you can do about this mess. So you're trying to make a mess on it out of it. And you think it is enough. The man was in this condition for too long. 38 years. Jesus, the Bible says, he sees him. He's just lying there. In fact, it's like the attitude that Jesus saw of this man. The way he handled himself. The way he was lying there. It spoke to Jesus. This is not a man that needs help. He doesn't want it badly enough to get it. And there are many times that we find ourselves in the same situation. We don't behave like we want help. We don't talk like we want help. We don't carry ourselves like somebody that needs deliverance or needs help or needs doors open or needs to be elevated or needs to be pushed to get into a place of their prosperity and their progress. And you are getting comfortable, Jesus says. Don't get comfortable. In that kind of a situation that you find yourself in. The problem is, many times when the situation has been there for so long, we don't know what to do. Some people stay in situations so long, till they expect no help, they expect no change. And sometimes they will even sabotage their own help. You try to help them, they will sabotage it. Have you been in a situation where a woman is so used to being battered to a point where they don't know how to behave when the battering stops? Because they are so used to this violent man. That is all they know. They are comfortable in the mess because they know the mess, the battering gives them an opportunity to speak. Without it, they don't know how to talk. So, they are slapped, they speak, they are slapped, they speak, they are slapped, they speak. You know, the more they are slapped, the more they talk, the more they are slapped, the more they talk. When the slapping stops, they don't know what to say anymore. And they are waiting for the slaps to come back. It's time to get out of the mess. Don't get comfortable in the mess you find yourself in. Praise the name of the Lord. The man had a bed there. Maybe he was taken there without a bed. But now after so many years, he says, you know what? Since I'm not getting out of this place, give me a bed. Let me have a bed. And I don't agree again with the statement that says, when you make your bed, lie in it. 
Some of these statements look nice, but they are dangerous. When I make a messy bed, I need help to get out of it, not to lie in it. Hallelujah. So if you're here today and you have, you have, you have found yourself in a mess and you're saying, I'll just, this is my bed, so I'll lie in it. I am here to tell you, you don't need to. Hallelujah. There's one that can get you out, deliver you, turn things around for you, reach out to him. His name is Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. And it doesn't matter how long this situation has been, we need to get out. There are people that are blind to open doors, blind to breakthroughs in their lives, blind to changes. Time has come that your eyes are opened so that you can see all that God has set in front of you, all the blessings, all the victory, all the success. Let your eyes be open. And I pray today that any one of us that has been impotent, you have no strength to do what you ought to do. My prayer is that the Holy Spirit of God will not just start things in your life, but he will impact you so hard that you will get out of that situation and begin to have power and strength in your life again. My prayer is that every blind person that cannot see the path that God has set out for you, for your success, for your victory, that God will impact you so powerfully by his Holy Spirit, you will rise up and change the situation in your life and begin to move with an eye that can see. Praise the name of the Lord. My prayer is that every person whose progress has been halted, you have been slowed down, you are limping instead of running, your time to run has come. Jesus is here that he may make things in abundance in your life. He is telling you, would you rise and run again? Don't give him excuses. Say, yes, sir. Yes, my Lord, I want to run. I want to see. I want to walk again. I want to be happy again. I want to live again. I want to arrive. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't care whether you have made the bed. I want you to get out of it. Don't care whether life has given you a lemon. I want you to pursue the orange and the mangoes that you wanted in the first place. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't justify the situation, the condition that you find yourself in. When the man is asked, you know, would you want to be made whole? He begins to answer and says, uh, there is no man. In other words, he's justifying. I am here. I am in this mess. I am in this situation for all these 38 years because there's no man to get me in there. He is trying to justify the situation. I am here to tell you, when you find yourself in a mess, don't look for excuses. Don't look for people to blame. Look up to Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith. He understands you. He has enough grace to lift you up and turn the things around in your life. Look to him. Don't blame people and don't justify the reason why you are in the mess. Hallelujah. Because when you justify your condition, you give it a license to stay on. You are not productive in your Christian walk, but you can justify it. It's because of the church I go to. It's because of the pastor who is my pastor. It's because of the work that I do. It's because of where I live. It's because of where I come from. Come on, don't justify the situation that has trapped you, made you blind, made you wither, made you impotent. Tell the Lord, I need help and I need out. Hallelujah. There's no man to get me into the water. What is your excuse? Why are you in the mess you're in? Why are you not growing as a Christian? Why are you not making it in life? 
Why has poverty become your second name? Why is sickness ravaging your life? Why is your marriage in a, is, why, why is your marriage a war zone? Why is your life so troubled? Why are you, what is the excuse? Is it where you come from? Is it your parents' problem? Is it the problem of finances? Because sometimes we say it is the problem of money. What is the excuse you have? I'm here to tell you, don't justify the situation. Just say, I need out of this. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't settle for reasons as to why you are the way you are. Don't develop an addiction to your affliction. There are so many people that have developed addiction to their affliction. You have been afflicted so hard, you have become immune. You have gotten used to it. You know, to you, it is just life as usual. While people are seeing something is wrong with you, you don't see it. Why people are seeing you are not progressing, you don't see it. Why people are seeing, you know, your life is withering, you don't see it. I have come to tell you, that God is out to help you. God is out to lift you up. God is out to make things turn around. But you need to say, yes, I need it, Lord. Not my mother, my father, my parents, my tribe. Uh-uh. Get out of the situation. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the man is like, you know, it's because, it's because, it's because. And many of us have a lot of becauses. It's because of so-and-so. It's because of this situation. It's because of Kenya. It's because of our politicians. It's because of, hey, stop the becauses. Just wake up and do what God wants you to do so that you can get your help. Hallelujah. And thank God that he's a gracious God. So Jesus... Having listened to the response, which is an excuse from the man, he gives him a command and he says, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. You can say a very insensitive Jesus. A very insensitive Lord. Because a nice pastor like this one, a humble pastor like this one, a loving pastor like this one is not supposed to talk like that. He's supposed to feel you. He's supposed to understand why you're there. He's supposed to talk to you nicely. He's supposed to say, God will do something. Don't worry. Not tell you, get up. Get out. Rise. Very insensitive Jesus. He gives him a challenge. Amen. And when he tells him, get up, he doesn't even give him a hand. You remember Peter and John in the book of Acts chapter number 3? When they meet a man that has been crippled, you know, and he asks them for money. And they say, silver and gold have we none. But in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. They help the man to rise. Because they are nice people who understand cripples don't just wake up, they need to be lifted up. And there are many times we find ourselves in messes and we expect people to come around us and tell us, oh yeah, and have a pity party with us and just, you know, talk things and then leave us in the same pity party, in the same mess. They don't challenge you to arise. They don't challenge you to get out of this situation. They don't challenge you to stop the pity party and begin to do what God has called you to do. You just sit there and there are so many people who enjoy the pity party. I have come to tell you today it is over with pity party it's time to get up and do what God wants us to do and be all that God wants us to be in the name of Jesus hallelujah and the goodness with God is that he doesn't have to wait for a particular season do you remember the Bible says that in a particular season the angel will come and stir the water and the man that gets in there fast is healed. Which season are you waiting for to get out of your mess? 
Which season are you waiting for to be delivered? For things to turn around in your life? Because with Jesus, there's no season. He is the master of seasons. He can do it when it's raining. He can do it when it's sunshine. He can do it when it's nighttime and during the day. He remains the Savior when it is darkness. He remains the Savior when it is light. He remains the Savior on all kinds of seasons. Praise the name of the Lord. He comes in. It is not time to jump in. The water has not been stirred, mister. Maybe this is even why the man was just there lying and saying, okay, you want to be made whole or there's no man? You don't understand this place, you man. You don't understand that we are here waiting for the water to be stirred. Come on, the season has not come. So what are you talking about? Jesus does not need a season to deliver you, to save you, to turn things around in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And so Jesus gives the man a challenge. And you know what? A challenge is divine. Because challenge will get you out. Pity party, empathy will leave you in the situation. We'll come there gather around you and say, oh, yeah, I understand. I remember. Even me, there was a time I was like, oh, yeah, I, I can feel you. I know how you feel. Oh, well, yeah, you know. And then we, we, we are with you. We are together. And then we leave. We leave you in the same mess, same situation, same problem, same challenge that we found you in. You wait for another group to come and give a pity party to you. Time has come that you stopped and time has come that we believers need to begin to challenge each other. Hallelujah. Especially those of us who are withering. It's time to flourish. Praise the name of the Lord. But don't expect the smoothering and the whatever. You know, you are stealing from God your tithes and you are coming. Oh, pray for me. My finances are held up. Oh, so you things are falling apart in my life. I need to tell you, stop stealing from God. It's a challenge to rise and do what you're supposed to do. But you know what? When we give you the challenge, what happens many times when people are challenged, you know, you, you leave church. Oh, the bishop talked to me so rudely. I can't stay in that church. I don't care where you go. The only thing that matters is that you get healed, you get transformed, you get delivered, so that you begin to prosper and flourish in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. You are living a life that has no Christian values. And you are here saying, oh, you know, my, my, my life is, uh, is, is, I'm having this. This is happening to me. This is happening. Things are falling apart in my life. But you know what? You are living a life that is totally opposite of what God expects you to do. And here you are. My marriage is in trouble, but you are adulterous. You know, my relationship don't hold up together, but you are fornicating. You need to stop it so that now you can begin to flourish again. Hallelujah. If you are single... And you are saying, oh, you know, I get this into this relationship. It breaks up. I don't know what the problem. You know the problem. Hallelujah. The problem is you give in too fast. And you don't want to be told that. You want us to bind the spirit of loose relationship. This, we bind you, you spirit of men leaving me. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Another one comes, you give in, they go. And you keep binding the spirit. It will never work. Hallelujah. Jesus tells the man, rise up, pick up your bed and walk. I'm not helping you to pick it. Pick it yourself. And he picked it up. And the Bible says, he walked. Praise the name of the Lord. I can see people rising and walking in the name of Jesus. I can see people getting out of their messes. Hallelujah. Because they are getting tired of the mess. While there's a solution, while there's a savior, you should not be staying in a mess when the savior is here. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord.
may have been rude, but it was divine. Hallelujah. Did you know that that challenge that Jesus gave this man made him to turn the things around in his life? What was carrying him, he carried. Hallelujah. What was carrying him, he carried. The bed was carrying him when Jesus gave him the command that looks unreasonable, that looks rude. It made him, he was so challenged. Because you see sometimes, the Bible does not, does not have to give you all the words that Jesus spoke. Maybe before he told him, rise up, pick up your bed, he told him, what is wrong with you? You sit here, you lie, you're so comfortable in this mess, you know. You don't even look like somebody who wants healing. You are just here. You are so happy being like this. Maybe you're happy with the pity party that you get. Time has come. Rise up, walk, take this bed. We don't know whether there were other words in between there. Maybe they were. We need people that can shake us up. Hallelujah. This is not the life to live. This is not the way to treat a husband. This is not the way to treat a wife. This is not the way to handle parents. This is not the way to handle children. This is not the way to do business. This is not the way to operate in church. This is not the way to walk like a Christian. Tell it like it is so that somebody can be shaken up to their, real, their reality. And then they will get out of the mess. But there are people that are comfortable in the mess. Because they have made it bearable and acceptable and they have made mesoned and they are happy. They are happy with it. Life goes on. Hello, people. It is not about life going on. It is not about our survival. It is about the children of God with a destiny fulfilling their destiny. It is about the children of God with a purpose fulfilling their purpose. Hallelujah. So the tables were turned. And how I pray that somebody here is going to turn tables on their problem. What is making you so shameful? You will rise up and begin to ashamed the same thing. Praise the name of the Lord. You are tired of this gossip mess. You will turn around and begin to speak against gossip. You are tired of poverty situation. Come turn around so that you can begin to do things that challenge the, 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 the poverty. You are tired of these fightings in your marriage. Now you begin to do things that challenges the fights and the thing that bring fights in your life. You turn tables on your problem. This is what we need, people of God. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I wonder whether we Kenyans have not come to a place where we are comfortable with the mess we find ourselves in. This mess called negative ethnicity. This mess called corruption, we have become comfortable in it, you know. It is a way of life. Have you heard people saying, this will never change, it will never stop. Corruption in Kenya will never stop. Tribalism in Kenya will never stop. You know, we have come to make, you know, we are making mesonade out of the mess of ethnic and negative ethnicity. We just talk about it. And that is why we talk of our people. You know, don't do this to our people. Don't do this to our people. You know, we are there. We are happy with the mess. Time has come, Kenyans, born again believers in this nation. We need to say no to negative ethnicity, no to corruption. God needs to get out of the mess that we find ourselves in. But somebody needs to look at his eye and say, believers, start. Be the starters. Stop it yourself. Stop being corrupt. Stop being, uh, you know, a tribalist. And you come and lift up your hands and say, Jesus is Lord. Somebody needs to look at in the eye and say, you, I heard you. I heard you talk like this about these people. I read your post and this post is evil. Stop it. Hallelujah. Don't just write there because everybody is writing and say, oh, it's a Jew, these people don't know. We, and you are also writing because we are all in a mess. And you don't want anybody to challenge you. Anybody say, what are you writing? You know, it's okay for you to just write, eh, oh, so you so and so, we'll deal with them. Eh, eh, we'll do it. Eh, eh, eh. You see, the problem is, this man found himself surrounded up 
with other people in the mess. Sometimes when we find we stay so much around messed up people, we don't see the mess. Because sometimes your mess is better than their mess. Have you been in a situation where your mess is a better mess than somebody else's mess? So you look at yourself, you know you are in pain, you know you are in trouble, but you look at the other person and say, hey, but if me, I'm better off. <laughs> it's like the mess of that person satisfies you. And there are so many people that are just living their lives. And when you challenge them, they ask, oh, you know, even pastors are doing that and doing that, even bishops. So, so is that the justification? Hallelujah. Thank God that we don't need a season. I don't have to wait for Sunday to be delivered. Hallelujah. I can cry to him in my bedroom and he will deliver me. Hallelujah. I can cry to him in the car and he will deliver me. I can do it on a Monday and I will be well. I don't have to wait for a season. The only thing that I need is that I need to be challenged enough in my life and know this mess stops. Hallelujah. And I want deliverance. I want my freedom. I want my healing. I want, you know, uh, my progress in the mighty name of Jesus. So I've come to tell somebody today, the Savior, the King of all kings, the one who heals, the one who delivers, the one who turns tables on the enemy, the one who turns messes into, into messages and tests into testimonies. He's present in this place to turn your things around, turn your situation around. It doesn't matter whether it is 10 years, 15 years. It does not matter. Here was a man of 38 years in a problem and things were turned around. There was no man to help him, but there was a man by the name Jesus who came in, not in the right season, but he did it. Your time for deliverance has come. Your time for doors to open has come. Your time for your eyes to open up has come. Your time for your progress. The thing that have limited you and made you limp, they will make you limp no more. The thing that have made a veil so that you cannot see the path of God, they will blind you no more. The thing that have crippled you, they will cripple you no more because Jesus, your Savior, says, Rise up! Take control of that problem. And begin to live. Begin to be what God wants you to be. Praise the name of the Lord. Shall we arise on our feet this morning? And I don't know. Maybe I'm not even talking to the entire church. Maybe I'm talking to about three, four, five people, ten people. But it's worth it. You hear, you find yourself in a mess. I don't want you to get used to it. I don't want you to be comfortable in that mess. You need to get out. Sometimes you need to thank people that challenge you, that speak so strongly to you. You know, I know people you... you the people that you go to to help you with finances, you know, you have no job. And the way you are talking, the way you are handling yourself is not showing that you are looking for one. But you want us to come and tell your brother, I understand you take this one for, for bus fare tomorrow. So are you going to live on handouts for the rest of your life? And the Bible says if you don't work, don't eat. Why are you choosing jobs? Are you happy with the mess that you find yourself in of joblessness to a point where you have no str struggle? You are not desperate enough to get a job. You're just there. So Jesus is looking for you, looking at you and saying, hey, he's praying for me. May open up a door for me to get a job. But you don't show any signs of a person that is desperate enough to get a job. You are happier with the pity part. And the people who challenge you and call you lazy, you hate them. But you need somebody who will look in the eye and say, stop this laziness, get to work. 
And the day you will realize, hey, she just called me lazy, me, me. And you get, <laughs> you get angry and go look for work. You are going to thank that person someday. Hallelujah. Because they made you get a job. Why don't we lift up our hands and close our eyes? We all know the messes that we find ourselves in. Do we want them to continue? Do we want to continue in the mess? Do we want the pity party? Are we going to rise up and do what God tells us to do? Do you know a person that is in a mess that needs to get sorted out? I wanted to lift up your voice and begin to pray. If you are okay, the Bible says, don't think. Those who stand need to be careful, lest they fall. So begin to pray and say, God, that I never get to a place where I'm blinded from seeing the path you set for me. I pray that I never get slowed down from arriving to the destination that you want me to arrive. But if you're already in a mess, say, God, help me out of this mess. In other words, I expect everybody to pray whether you are in one or not because if you are, you need out. If you are not, you need God to help you not to get in one. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, oh God. Every laziness in me, in the name of Jesus, I'm getting out of it. Every form of confusion and blindness that I find myself in, I am getting out. In the name of Jesus, give me, oh God, the obedience obedience to obey your voice and just get out of my blindness, out of my laziness, out of my crippleness. I want out, oh God, that I may be all that you want me to be. That I may arrive at the time you want me to arrive. That, Lord, I may be at the place you want me to be. I, Lord God, I'm tired of being withered. Lord, in my walk in ministry, I'm tired of being withered. I want to flourish. I want to be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me to arise. And I want to turn the tables on, on being withered. I want to flourish. I want to be fruitful. I want to be green. In the name of Jesus. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. And Father, I pray for your people. And I just want to pray, dear God, that you will talk to somebody this morning that finds themselves in a mess to just obey your voice and just get out. Rise up. Be all that you want them to be. Here I am, Lord, name of Jesus.
Oh, man. 